In this episode today, we're going to continue our discussion from last time, last video, where we talk about the purpose and the meaning of life. And I want to continue this analogy of the story between the father and the son we just spoken about earlier. You see, this analogy is very beautiful because if we really think about it, the father is like God who gives every one of us a map, a guidepost, so to speak, about where we are to go and our final end and destination. And yet, what do most of us do with this map? We take it, we look at the map, and we think, okay, well, you know, it's a very interesting thing, but, you know, I want to do my own thing. I want to find my own road, my own pathway, so to speak. And we ignore the map God lays out for us. And after ignoring that for a while, we go about doing our own thing, and everything is good. It's sunny, it's nice, everything is great. But then comes the challenges, the difficulties, and the storms in our lives. And when we're confronted with these issues, we start thinking to ourselves, Oh, God, where are you? Why did this happen to me? What did I do wrong? On and on and on. Sometimes we even start blaming God. Why did this happen to me? It's because of you, God. It's your fault. But you can just imagine God stares at us with love and he shows us that it's not so much him, but it's us. You see, we try to carve our own pathway, which God has laid out for us, and we try to ignore him. But if we truly keep our focus on the Lord, that will help us in our life. Now, as we reflect on our lives and free will and intellect and all of that, we have choices. And we all know that the choices we make have consequences. And so I'd like to introduce a theme for us today, the intellect and the will. Both of these come together, they go together. You see, what separates us from animals is that we have intellect, and also a will. You see, animals have instincts. And you know, when we speak of intellect, let's discuss that for a moment. God gives us the ability to think, the ability to reason, and that separates us from animals. They have instincts, but we have a mind of our own. We can think of our own, we have our preferences, and if we think deep and long enough, we can come up with creative things. Think about society and all the buildings and everything that we've done, right? We have the intellectual capability to do it. God gives us the intellect. And he also gives us another thing called free will. We are free to choose. And as you can see, with free will, you must have an intellect to be able to determine the differences. And in order to have an intellect, an actual thinking thought process, you have to have free will. So both of these come to, they go together, intellect and free will. In order to have intellect and utilize it, you have to have free will. And in order to utilize the free will, you have to have intellect. So both of these come together. Now go back to the animal example. Do they have free wills? Well, you know, some people might say, oh yes, they do. And, you know, we go into a philosophical discussion. But in this, in this instance, let's say animals do not have free will. So there you have it. For us, we have both the intellect and a free will. Now I want to continue with a discussion on purpose. You see, every one of us is created for a purpose. But let's go back even further still. Everything that we do has a purpose. Everything that we create as human beings. We build buildings, we build cars, we build roads, we build tables and chairs. They all have a purpose. Even the atomic bomb, for example, that too has a purpose. So everything that we build is for a purpose. And you know, God created us for a purpose as well. And you might think, oh, well, I have a purpose in life, so let me try to find it. Let me go on Google and I'm just going to type in, what is my purpose in life, etc., right? And if we search for it, we get a ton of information. So much, like, information overload. Oh, this is your purpose. That is your purpose. On and on and on. 
And we find tons of books as well and literature that talks about our purpose in life. But let's pause and think about it for a moment. What is your purpose in life? Don't think about other people's idea. Think about your own. What is it that's going to bring you joy, happiness, fulfillment, purpose, etc.? You know, I've met a number of people who've gone through midlife crisis, so to speak, and they discern this for a long time. They have a certain purpose or ideology or they think so. And then after a while, they say, well, you know what? I'm not happy. This is not it. It's my mom or my dad or a relative or a teacher or fill in the blank who tells me this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Even society tells us what our purpose is at times. And it, it tells us what we have to do to be happy, to be joyful. Buy this. Buy more of this. This product will help you to be better. This will always satisfy you, for example. But what we see is so much noise out there in the world. There's so much noise out in society telling us what our purpose is, what the right and the wrongs are, and what we should be doing or not be doing. Or especially today, even worse, they tell us, well, don't listen to anything, just do whatever you want. Is that our purpose? Do whatever we want? That's a problem, especially today. And if we go back to that story, which I share with God's math and plan, if we say we're going to do things our way, there's so much noise again, and we can easily get lost. So if we go back to that story, what we see is that our life is like a journey. And God gives us hints, road signs, pointing us to where we should be going. He shares with us our purpose. But yet, you know, our, our challenge is, no, I want to do my own thing. I want to do uh, whatever plans I have for myself. Not God's plans. And so, as we wrap up, you know, this whole reflection on purpose and, and, and go deeper into it, and to see that God gives us the intellect, the free will, you know, and to be able to discern all the differences and talking about our purpose too, I want to leave you with a question, a very important question. And I invite you to please take the time to reflect on it. The question is this, if you know with 100% certainty that one year from now, you will die, how will you live your life differently? How would you live it differently? Or would you live the same way you do? Yes, indeed, we can get done a, a lot of things done in a year, let alone a lifetime. But think about that. If you're going to die one year from now, how would you do things differently? And that's a starting dialogue to searching for our purpose in life. And I want to drop another hint too. Make sure God is part of your life. Thank you for listening, and we continue on to the next lesson.